love the words of this song. And the song starts out with these words. Thank you, God, for my mother. She taught us how to love you. She set an example by walking with Jesus. She always praised, prayed for us. And she cared for us like you taught her to. And it goes on to say, thank you for my mother. She is like none other. On her I depend. She is here to catch me if I stumble and fall. She is there to see me through it all. Mothers, teaching your children to love God and living a godly example before them is the most important thing you can ever pass on to your child. Thank God for mothers that will pray and care for their children the way God laid it out in the Bible. I am convinced that the reason why so many people grown and old in this world are doing evil and bad things with no fear of God in their minds, I'm convinced that it's because they were not taught to fear God. So I thank God for my God-fearing, Holy Ghost-filled, Proverbs 31, Mother of God. And I'm so glad to say that I can say that my mother is still with me on today. And I have a friend, Gail, who celebrated her mother's birthday on yesterday. Mama Ali was 98 years young on yesterday. Don't y'all know that is a blessing to be 98 years old and be in good health. So we thank and praise God for Miss Ali. So mothers, teach your children to fear God and everything else will fall in place. Just tell them about God. Whether they want to hear it or not, teach them about God, and I promise you, everything else will fall in place. That's why I thank God for being in my life, because God has saved me. He's rescued me from my burning hell, and I thank and praise God for that. And that's why we love Him on today. I love you, Lord. I love you.
God, I got Jesus. Thank God. Aren't you glad you got Jesus? Aren't you happy you got Jesus? If it wasn't for Jesus on our side, the question is, where would we be? Thank God for Jesus. Eternal God in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come. Lord, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we thank you for blessing us now. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father God, for giving us another chance to lift up the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for ourselves. Forgive us for messing up. Release us, Father God, from ourselves. Bless us, Father God, that we will walk in you, that we will hear your word, Father God. Forgive us for our sins, that nothing will hinder our blessings through your word. Now, Lord, we ask you to speak your word to us, that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding will be made clear. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for another privilege. We thank God for another honor. Amen. We thank God for another chance to be on top of the ground and the ground not on top of us. God has blessed us again. And I tell you, if you're on the land of the dying, you ought to be headed for the land of the living. God has blessed us one more again. And I'm glad about it. I'm so glad that God has blessed us, has anointed us, and has picked us up for service one more time. Aren't you glad to be in the service? Aren't you glad to be in the service one more time? The songwriter said, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. If the apostle Peter was here, he would say it like this. Lord, it's just good to be here. Let me tell you, Lord, it's just good to be here. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. God has blessed us. I want to call your attention to 2 Kings chapter 4. In the Old Testament, the book is 2 Kings. The chapter is 4. I want to just talk and read one verse and preach the whole chapter. How about that? I read and you're hearing one verse and preach uh, at least 90% of the chapter. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And all the soon-to-be mothers, thank God for mothers. There's nothing like a good mother. Second Kings chapter 4, verse number 30. It's in the Old Testament. Stand up, Anthony. Second Kings chapter 4, verse number 30. When you found it, you will discover these words. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. I want to ask the question today. What would mama do? What would mama do? What would mama do? Just a few years ago, there was a acronym out, WWJD. And the question was asked, what would Jesus do? Well, many times people caught on to that as just a fad. So today I launched the question to you on Mother's Day. What would mama do? In the text, we find a Shunammite woman. All right. This text begins in verse number 8 and proceeds to verse number 37. And because it's Mother's Day, we got a lot more to say about mama than we do that. All right. You can fool yourself if you want to, brother. You can act like you're all that in a bag of chips. You, act, you can act like you really got it going on. But Mother's Day tops that day. All right. Mother's Day, Mother's Day, when Mother's Day show around, come up, folk will drive thousands of miles to be with Mama. That's right. 
When Mother's Day comes around, people will, will go beyond their call of duty yes. to be with Mother. Yes. Christmas is a great day, but sometimes Christmas rivals Mother's Day. It is something to it. It's because mama, it takes mama to carry a baby. It takes mama to spend up all her time. And it's the swelling of her feet. It's the, the bubbling of her waistline. It is the headache that goes with it. And then when it comes to labor, mama's life hangs between life and death at that very moment that she's giving birth to a child. Some of you were in labor 30, 30 hours. Some of you were in labor so long until the pain was excruciating. And I just want to serve notice on mamas today to let you know that I can't understand. I won't understand. And I don't want to understand what mothers really have to go to through to get us here. And I want to confess today that men don't envy you. Men don't want to go through what you are going through. And, and mothers go through stuff even after they long gone, grown, and on their own. Yes, sir. Men love their children. Men has a way of disciplining their children. But mama's hearts so will always be with their children. Amen. When we pick up in verse number 8, there, there's Elisha there. Elijah, he was the, the follower of Elijah. Elijah found his way to shoot him. And when he got to shoot him, he was going throughout the land ministry. And a woman, a Shunammite woman, noticed Elijah and she said to her husband, Why don't we make the man of God comfortable? Why don't we do something for this man of God? He's coming through Shunem on a regular basis, and he's ministering God's word. Uh -huh. yes, yes. So this woman, this woman goes to her husband. It's a note, sisters. It's a note to you. At least include your husband. Uh -huh. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't go around your husband. But whatever you do, don't usurp the authority of your husband. This woman went to her husband. And when she went to her husband, she suggested to her husband, I know this man is a holy man. I know he's a holy man, and when he come to town, why don't we have a room set up for him? And when he come to town, we want to make sure that this holy man of God has a place so they built an upper room and they put him in there. And when they built this upper room, they put him in there. They had a bed in there for the men of God. <laughs> they, they not only did they have a bed, they had a table in there. They had a chair in there. They had a lampstand in there. And they did whatever they could to make the men of God welcome. Yeah. My first point to you today, and I got about 21 points today, so come on right with me and run with me. You know, it's Mama's Day. It's a different kind of day, you know. This mama, this woman did not have a child. Not only did she not have a child, she had an old man for a husband. And there's a problem with that. There's a problem in that she didn't have a child already, and she had an old man for a husband. So it says that they probably not going to have any children. And it goes on to say that the Bible teaches that whenever the man of God came through, he would turn into this place. He realized the hospitality of this couple. And he sent Gehazi, which was the, the servant of Elijah, he sent Gehazi to talk to this woman. And asked the woman, what is it that you have desire of? He asked the woman, what is it that you need? He asked the woman, what is it that you're asking the Lord for? The woman replied, I don't need anything, man of God. We just wanted to make a good place for you to stay when you're in these parts. So he asked her, he asked her well, what is wrong? The Hazi comes to him and he says to him, well, he, she has an old man for a husband. And because he's an old man and they don't have any children, they don't really expect any children. First point, my first point today is uh, mama, mama is a sharing woman. Yeah, all right. 
Mama, mama would be a sharing woman. Mama, mama is not selfish. Mama is a sharing woman. In verse number eight, we find that this woman is sharing in the fact that she was willing to give up the comfort of her home uh -huh. just for the man of God. Yeah. My second point is uh, the, 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 the mama that, that's a real mama, mama recognizes that which is holy. Look at verse number nine, verse number nine, verse number nine says that she recognized, she knows that he is a holy man of God. Mama is one who will recognize that which is holy. Some of us won't recognize holy. Some of us won't recognize that which is set apart. Some of us won't recognize that which God has already ordained and God has touched. My third point, I'm rolling to point number 21. My third point is that mama trusts God for her future. Mama will always trust God. A good godly woman, a good godly mother will trust God for her future. That's found in, in verse number 14. You will find that she trusts God with her, her future. She trusts God with, she, she says, the, the question is, what then to be done for her? Good Hazar says that she has no son. It was a problem when a woman didn't have a son. It was disgrace when a woman didn't have a son. You see, you see, Sister Powell had to have a son because, because she wanted somebody great, Hannah. She, she wanted somebody who was a man child. She didn't stop till she had a son. And then she had a daughter to put the accent on the cake. And when, when, when a woman in biblical days didn't have a child, it was a disgrace. And they didn't see things like we see them today. The Bible says that she, she, would, she did not have a child, had an old man and didn't have a child. Why do you keep pressing that issue, Pastor? Well, he was an old man. It didn't say he was an aged man. He didn't say he's a man that, 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 did, did, that had a lot of years behind him. It says that he was an old husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you got an old husband, Sister David, well. <laughs> you don't expect much from an old husband. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, Sister Davis, when, when you got an old husband, you, you kind of leave him alone sometimes. <laughs> Sister Davis, when you have an old husband, you don't, you don't put an old husband under pressure to do great things. So Gehazi, Gehazi says to the man of God, she, she has a husband, but he's old. He's old. He, he's of age. He, he's beyond his seed-giving days. He's old. Old husband. Right, Sister Davis, when you have an old husband, you help him in the yard, Sister Davis. <laughs> I didn't prepare it like this, but this is just how it's coming out. Sister Davis, when you have an old husband, you, you help him wash the car, Sister Davis. <laughs> Brother Ma, she had an old husband. She had an old husband. Gehazi says she has no children and she has an old husband and therefore she's in trouble. My next point to you is, is, is mama will trust God with her future. Mama, mama, mama will trust God with her future. In verse number 14, she's trusting God. Even though she has a husband, she didn't trust her husband. She trusted God. Men, let me say to you today that a good mama, when she's looking out for her children, she will trust God, and you want somebody to trust God before they trust you. She, a good mama will trust God with her future. My next point, point number four is, mama pursues the truth from God. The prophet start talking, Elijah start talking and telling her that she's going to embrace a child this time next year. Mama pursues truth from God. Yes. But mama will always look for the truth. Don't, don't just make me feel good. Yeah, yeah. Don't just give me something that can make me shout right now. Yeah. Look at what she says to the prophet right here in, in verse number 16. He says, about this time next year, you will embrace a son. Yeah. And she said to the man of God, no, my Lord. Lord with a small L, no my Lord, no man of God, don't play with me like that. Don't, don't fool your handmaid. Don't lie to me like that. 
She realizes that her circumstances were bad. She realizes that she was far beyond her season with her old husband. She didn't go out and get another man. She realized she had an old husband. Uh -huh. Let me just stop by to let you know if you got an old husband, keep him. Yeah. And trust God to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't go out and get anybody else. Uh -huh. She kept the one she had. Uh -huh. You know, don't wake up in the morning and say, the Lord showed me that you are not the man that I'm supposed to be with. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh -huh. God has honored your decision, sister. God has honored your decision. You hang on in there with what God has blessed you with. Mama, mama said, don't, don't play that game with me. And, and the prophet said, this time next year, you will embrace your son. He was very specific. He was very on target. And whenever a man of God speaks the word of God, whenever he's a prophet, what he prophesies always comes true. All right. We got too many prophets running around here today. We, we got everybody want to be a prophet. Everybody want to be a potentate. Everybody want to be an apostle. Everybody want to be something that no one else is. Let me just share with you. God is still calling prophets. If it's not in the word, it won't be done. If it's not in the word, don't believe it. If it's not in the word, you can't trust it. Mama pursued the truth. She pursued the truth. In verse number 16, verse number 17, Mama looks forward to the blessings of the Lord. Mama looks forward. Mama looks forward. You see, sometimes Mama don't have all that they need, brother. Sometimes Mama can't give you, Grandmama can't give you everything she had because she doesn't have everything. But one thing that a God-fearing Mama does, she looks forward to the blessings of God. She doesn't sell drugs to get it. She doesn't prostitute to get it. She doesn't hang out on the corner to get it. She looks forward to God blessing her with whatever she needs for her children. She looks forward to God blessing. She looks forward to God blessing her. She looks forward to God blessing her. So he, he told her that this time next year you will have a child. Her whole psyche changed. Let me tell you, the moment, the moment the woman realized that she's going to be a mama, she started preparing us herself. She doesn't hang out with the girls anymore. She doesn't, she doesn't party like she used to party anymore. She started making common sense preparation for the brand new baby that's coming on the scene. Mama looked forward to the blessings of Almighty God. My next point, my next point, where am I, Sister Henry? My next point, point number six, point number six, uh, mama will watch the growth of the child. Yes, yes. I want to tell you, mama will watch the growth. Mama, mama will watch the child grow from, from a little bitty thing to a big old thing. All right. Mama will stand by a child. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says in verse number 18, the Bible says, so the child grew. And he grew because mama was present. Yeah. And as he grew, as the child grew, mama made sure the child was taken care of. <coughs> That's why I don't understand. I, I really can't get it how children get up and sass their mama out. All right. I, I don't get it. I, I, somebody have to make me understand it. I don't get it, Brother Dixon, how you can talk to your 99-year-old mama in a camera. It's because the fact of the matter is, uh, he knows that his 99-year-old mama, even at 99, will, will demand respect. All right. And then, even when she cannot de demand respect, they will give her respect because of who she is. Yeah, yeah. Young people, we have to respect mama regardless of what she's done. Yeah, yeah. All right. Regardless of where she's been. Regardless of how we disagree with what she acts like. Right. And let me tell you, it's a blessing to have a mama still with you. Right. It's a blessing to have a godly mama still with you. Let me tell you, 99 years, and in Sister Davis' words, come on, Sister Ditchin, you've got to make a hundred. Whenever, whenever, whenever somebody gets in the 90s, Sister Davis starts prophesying as a prophetess. Whenever they get in the night and she starts hollering, you got to make a hundred. Come on, let's make a hundred. Yeah. 
It's because we have great respect for mama. We have respect for, for mama. We, we look, when we look at 2 Kings chapter 4, in verse number 18, we find out that mama will watch her children grow. The Bible said he grow. My next point, number seven, mama will support father and child bonding. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether they're with you or not. It doesn't matter whether the man is what you want or what he wants, and you're not what he wants. Mama, a real mama, will support father-child bonding and relationship. A real mama, real mama, don't get caught up on whether or not you see them or whether or not you pay child support. A real mama will make sure that every child knows who daddy is. That's why, that's why it's impossible for you to say, I don't have a daddy. Everybody got a daddy, whether he's on the scene or not. A real mama will make sure he will know his folks. All right. All right. Back home in Mississippi, uh, they would say, you need to know your folks so you won't marry your folks. That's right. That's right. You, you, you need to know your folks so you won't spend the wrong kind of time with your folks. Uh -huh. Can I just testify right now? Yeah. Can I just tell the story right now? When I was in high school, I, I met this girl, and I took her over to daddy's house. You know, in high school, I was living across town, so I would go by and visit my mom and daddy, and daddy and mama can always look at a girl and tell her, tell you whether she's worth being with or not. I went over to the house, and I decided to leave her at the house with daddy while daddy sent me to the store. I think he did it on purpose. So when I walked back in the door, Sister Paul, the little girl was sitting there shaking her head, saying, no, no, no. Found out that she was my cousin. Oh, Ooh, what a night. Well, well, well. Let me tell you, you need to make sure your children, yeah. Sister I tell them, make sure they know who their folk are. Yeah. Make sure they know who their folk were because we were about to go to the next level and commit ourselves to the other and talk about how much I love her and how much she loved me. But the thing about it is, young girls, don't worry about how much he whistles in your ear. It may be your cousin. It may even be your brother. Mama will always support father-child bonding. She will always support father-child bonding. Number eight, mama values a good work ethic from a child. Look at verse number 18. The Bible says in verse number 18, not only did he grow, he went into the fields working with his daddy and with the reapers. Mama, a good mama know that a boy should not be sitting at home lounging around. All right. All right. All right. A good mama know that, 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 a, that a girl ought to also get a job. Right. Right. You see, we look at Proverbs 31 and women all over the world talk about they want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Well, you need to read the text. In Proverbs 31, the woman was not a stay-at-home mom. The Bible says she got up early in the morning, she prayed over her children, she made sure that the household was protected with prayer. And the Bible says in Proverbs 31 that she went out into the marketplace and she cut deals. She sold. She was multifaceted and multi-talented. So a Proverbs 31 mama, she not only prays for her children, but she works for her children. She has many jobs. And this Proverbs 31 woman, she got respect from the old man of the house as well as from the children. The Bible says that this woman in Proverbs 31, she made her husband look good when he went into the city. Proverbs. Everybody want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. I say that you go back and read the text. <laughs> go back and look at the text. Some women have declared that I, I moved to Houston for some man to take care of me. Now, if you want to be a Proverbs 31 woman, you ought to get up early in the morning, prepare the way for your children, prepare the way for your husband, talk to the Lord about it, and make your deals in the marketplace, and make sure they are legal deals. Yeah. All right. yeah. Yeah. Woo! Good God Almighty. 
a, a, a woman, a good mama, values a good work ethic from her children. She want a child to, you got to teach them a good work ethic now. You got to teach them a good work ethic while they're young. You got to teach them to get up early in the morning so they can report early in the morning. Yes, yes, yes. They have to have a good work ethic. That's why many boys are tearing up girls' lives because the mama did not teach them to respect women, to respect girls, to have a good work ethic. And that's why girls' lives are so messed up. All right. Hallelujah Amen. to the Lamb. Verse number 19. Daddies know the importance of mothers when the child are in distress. Daddy knows the importance of mama when the children are in, in distress. Look at the, the Bible says, he, he, verse number 19, the Bible discusses with us that, that, that the boy was working in the field with the men. The boy was working in the field with the men. Whether his daddy is on the scene or not, the Bible says he was working in the field with his daddy and the reapers. Daddy knows the importance of the mama when the child is in distress. How do you know that? Because the Bible says the boy got sick in the field. He starts saying, my head, my head, my head is hurting. And he tells the servant, the daddy tells the servant, carry him to his mama. So the daddy knows the importance of a mama when a child is in distress. He doesn't have to be a mama's boy. He just has to be a boy born by mama. He doesn't have to be somebody that's tied to her skirt tail. But even men know when children are in distress, send them home to their mama. Why send them to the mama? Because the mama knows what to do with them. Because the mama has carried them for nine months. The mama has taken care of them when they were down and out. The daddy knows when a child is in distress, there is importance in the mama. Number 10, my, my, my 10th point. Mama will nourish her child even unto death. Mama, mama will nourish her child even unto death. Unto death. Look at what the text says in verse number 20. It says, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 20. It says that the woman let her child, this one that had grown, the woman let her child sit on her knee and he fell asleep. He sat on his knee until noon. Not only did he fall asleep unconsciously, he died sitting on her knee. I want to say to you today, mama will nourish her child even unto death. All right. When no one else, when no one else will get up early in the morning. That's right. Mama will. When no one else will go to the hospital, mama will. When no one else will go to the jail cell, mama will. When no one else will take care of you, mama will be there for you. You asked me the question this morning. What would mama do? Mama will nourish her child yes. even unto death. That's right. yes. Verse number 21 tells us mama will not give up on life, the life of her child. Verse number 21 says to us, and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. Shut the door upon him and went out. When she laid him on the bed, many of you would have come to the conclusion we need to meet at the cemetery, but this mama will not give up. She did not give in. She did not give out. Mama will not give up on the life of her child all right. at all. That's right. Mama won't give up. Mama won't give up. Sometimes I, I, I wish I could tell some mama, just, just give up, but I would be talking loud and saying nothing. Mama will not give up on life of her child, on the life of her child. Number, number seven, number 12, number 12. Mama will run for help from God. Mama will run for help from God. When no one else won't get help. When no one else will do what it needs to be done to get help. Mama will run. For help. Look at what the text says. The text 
The text declares that she 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 called to her husband and said, there she is again, going to that man again. <laughs> she has valuable, a good mama has good respect for her husband. Right. It, it, says, it says to us, it says to us that, that she called, verse number 22, she called to her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. Amen. Let me tell you, if there was no donkey available, mama would have run. <laughs> she didn't say that I may go to the man of God. She said that I can run to the man of God. Let me tell you, mamas get in, hurry for her, in, hurry, in a hurry for their children. Right. Mamas get in a hurry. Mama get to the You better not get between a mama and her child. When they're trouble on the scene, Mama will run for help from God. See, real godly mamas know where to get help. That's right. And in those days, the man of God represented God, so she ran to help on behalf of her child from God. Mama will run for help. Verse number 22 for her child. She will run to God for help. Number 13, mama will imagine the best in the midst of the worst. Yeah, yeah. Mama will imagine the best even in the midst of the worst, Sister Nanlong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the doctors have given up, mama still amazed with what God can do. When, when, when the kinfolk walk out on them and say they're struck out on drugs for life, mama will imagine the best in the midst of the work. Mama has a way of imagining things, and she goes talking like a crazy woman sometimes. Other folk think she's crazy. Verse number 23, mama says, all is well. When other folks see the worst, mama looks for the best. When other people have counted her child out, mama looks for what is best. Right. When other people say he's the worst on the block, mama will always see some good as she always right. looks right. for the best. Right. Verse number 24, verse number 24, we understand mama will do the unusual to benefit her child. Mama will do the unusual to benefit her child. Verse 24 says, then she saddled up a donkey. Now what's she doing out there? I like to see my mama saddle up a donkey. All right. I get a camera and send it in to America's funny video. If mama get out there to saddle up a donkey, when she's come out of hospitals and, and when she has come out of a, a doctor's office working all day. And, and I like to see mama sell up dump. But let me just share with you. Mama will do the unusual to benefit her child. Right. Verse 27, 24 rather. Verse 24 says, she saddled up her donkey and said to the servant. My next point, verse, my point number 15 says, Mama will give orders and take chances for her child. Mm -hmm. Mama, Mama will give orders. Brother Richard, Mama will give orders. Mamas, when it comes to their children, they turn to grill sergeants. Wow. I mean, they turn to stuff that you've never seen in this little woman before. You, mama become one who gives orders. She gives orders, and in the country they say she start kicking and taking names. Uh -oh. Mama, mama says that, that she said to the servant, verse number 24, she said to the servant, drive, go forward, and do not slack the pace unless I tell you to. Now this nice woman, this same nice woman that gave the preacher a place to live, this same nice woman that's Holy Ghost filled and recognized holy things, this same nice woman, when her boy got sick, when her boy died, she started giving orders like she was the grill sergeant. All right, all right, all right. She said, drive, go forward, don't slack the pace, 
what it says in the country, put the metal to the pedal to the metal. And don't let up. What she said is, my boy is dead. I need to get God's help. And whatever you do, drive. Move forward. Go right now. Move forward. Don't stop. Don't slack the pace. Yes, yes. Unless I say so. This mama becomes somebody who gives orders wow. when it comes to her child. Yeah, we'll talk about her child. She gives orders. She, 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 she gives orders, and not only does she give orders, she takes chances she's never taken before. Right. Oh, you're right. Come on now. Mama takes chances. She, she takes chances on her children that she's never taken before. I'm, I mean, I, I listen to some mamas and some grandmamas sometimes, and I said, you're going to do what? You, you're going to do who? You're going to do why? You're going to do when and what? Because mamas take chances. Now, you know this woman did not have any business telling this man to drive this donkey. Matter of fact, drive it in the ground if you have to. Drive this donkey, and when you drive it, don't slack up. Don't slack on the pace until I say so. Mama take chances for her children. She takes chances for her, her children. She gives orders and she takes chances. Number 16, mama will approach the man of God in crisis for her child. Yeah. Verse number 25. Mama will approach the man of God in crisis for a child. You see, one thing, one thing I understand real well, as the pastor of the New Beginning Church, when a mama has a crisis, I got to respond. <laughs> I'm not going to get any sleep <laughs> until I respond. <laughs> I, I'm not going to get any rest until I respond. Whenever there's a mama in crisis, she will always approach the man of God with great demands. Mama will approach the man of God in crisis for her child. Yeah, it, 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 she will approach the man of God. The Bible says, verse number 25, so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it was when the man of God saw her afar off. And guess what? Even the man of God know when she's in trouble. Mm -hmm. And you know, some people call, call on the man of God for any old thing. Mm -hmm. But when a mother's in trouble, she got a different demeanor. Uh -huh. When a mother's in trouble, she has a heartache that just can't be fixed. And so she, she will approach the man of God when she's in crisis on behalf of her child. And he said to the servant Gehazi, look, there's a Shunammite woman. She's in crisis. He could look at her. Please run now, verse number 26, please run now and meet her and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, it is well. All right. All right. She, she answered, it is well. Yeah. I told you, I told you, the mama can see some best in the worst. Mm -hmm. The mama can see the best in the very worst. Let that boy get in trouble. Let that girl get in trouble. Yeah. Mama and grandmama and great-grandmama, they can see. As a matter of fact, they can feel when you're messing up. The old saint, Sister, Sister Carter, would say it like this, I got a check in my spirit. <laughs> I knew something was wrong. And mama will get on the phone. Now, she knows she ain't up at 2 o'clock in the morning, but she will sit straight up in the bed. Yes. Brother Carter over there. <sighs> but she'll sit straight up in the bed and say, something wrong with my child. Yeah, that's right. Something wrong with my grandchild. Yeah. And even if they're in the next room, she walk in there and she's already said something. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. That's right. So mama, mama would do some crazy stuff <laughs> when her child is in, in crisis. And, and, and so the Bible says that she would say it's all, and she said it was all well. And, and then my next point to you is mama will humble herself for her child's help. That's right. That's right. Mama will humble herself for her child to get some help. It's right there in the text. Verse number 27 says that she, she approached the man of God. She already told Gehazi, 
something was wrong. So he, the servant of Elijah, wanted to pull her away. But as, as he wanted to pull her away, the man of God says, leave her alone. She's in great distress. She is in great distress. The Lord has hidden it from me. But I know she's in, how did he know? Because mama got a look on her face. She had left her cane. She was, she was walking like she had somewhere to go. All right. All right. Mamas can move like they never moved before when a right. child right. is in crisis. Yeah. Yeah. She humbled herself. The text declares that she bowed down before the man, God, the man of God's feet, called him by his feet. The man of God had to say, leave it alone. See, even the man of God will will protect the mama when she's in distress. Because every man of God has a mama. Mm -hmm. And we know what mama has been through mm -hmm. on our behalf. Right. Mama will humble herself in order for her child to get help. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. God prepares and he prepared the man of God. That's the same point. God had already prepared the man of God to bless the woman when she was in trouble. In other words, God support the mama that would do the right thing. Number 18, verse 28. Mama expresses her anger on behalf of her children. If you want to see a mad mama, Sister Davis Davis, if you want to see a mad mama, mess with that chocolate boy. <laughs> if you want to see a, a mad mama, a mad grandmama, mess with that red boy. <laughs> mama expresses her anger on behalf of her child. Verse number, number 28, verse number 28, it says, did I ask for a son from my Lord? In other words, I didn't ask you for this boy. Now I got this boy. Now he's dead. Yeah, yeah. And she's not a, a nice woman at this time. Wow. She doesn't want to be dealt with right now. She, she wants answers. Mamas will express their anger when their children are in trouble. That's right. Did you not deceive me? Did you uh, fool me? Now why have you Fool me. Man of God, I was doing fine without a child. Now I have a child. You deceive me because now my child is dead. Mama will express her anger when it comes to her children. Number 19, Mama will not accept no for an answer when it comes to her child. Verse number 28. She ain't going for that. I know it's not good English, but Ain't nobody got time for that. That's right. That's right. Mama gonna express herself, and and the the national guard can't shut her down. She's gonna express her anger. You have gotten, as a matter of fact, she will say, "You got me angry now, and I don't care who knows it." And you're right about it. And I'm gonna deliver my anger upon you, preacher. If the poor pit ever want to be in trouble, mm. tell a mama something about a child yeah, yeah. that she has concluded is not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mama will not accept no fun answer when it comes to her child. Yeah. Number 20, mama will be there to pick her child up and That's take her right. 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 Mama will be there. Mama will be there. Mama will be there to pick her child up when they are down and out. The Bible says that, that, that Elijah revived this child. And when the child was revived, the man of God said, come on in here, pick your child up. And the Bible says, in verses 36 and 37, the Bible says that she picked him up. She picked up her son and when she went out. My final point to you today is, once mama's child is blessed, she's satisfied. 
Once her child is blessed, she 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 satisfied. She she she, she put on her lipstick again, put her rouge on. She she walks like she got a stride. She she moves forward like she's running things. Mama got a slide in her glide like never before. When she pick up a child and her child is all right, she's all right. And mama does what mama does because of what God does. That's right. God does not give up on us. Yeah. God does not let us go unfit. Yeah. God does not let us kill ourselves. God keep watching over us. Mama does what mama does because God does what God does. Yeah. How do you know that preacher? Because I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. But God felt my desire. He picked me up. He turned me around. How did he do it, preacher? Over 2,000 years ago. He took his son, Jesus the Christ. He allowed me, me to kill him just for me. Mama's love is because of God's love. God gave his very best. Mama will give her last for her yeah, child. Yeah. God gave his only begotten son yeah. for you and for me. Yeah. Mama does what she does because of what God has already done. Yeah. Over 2,000 years ago, yeah. he gave his son yeah. on a skull hill called Calvary. Yeah. He died between two thieves. Yeah. Mean men killed him. Right. He died, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah. They pierced him in the side. Out came blood and water. They laid him in a barber tomb. Out of that third day morning, he got up with all power. Holy Ghost power. All power in heaven and earth. In his hand, he got up with all power. God gave his son, his only begotten son, his only one of a kind son, his only unique son. He gave his son for us. That's why love does not record wrong because love is God. Love is not puffed up. Love is not changing. Love will go to the bitter end with you because love is God. They killed love. They thought, the devil thought he had love. They laid love in a bar or two. Joseph brand new too. An unused too. Love got up early that third day morning. He got up for you. And he got up for me. Happy Mother's Day, mother. And it's a happy Mother's Day because of what our father has already done. Happy Mother's Day, mother. It's a happy Mother's Day. Because what Jesus did on Calvary. Right, yeah. Happy Mother's Day, Mother. Right. It's a happy Mother's Day. Because all of that third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand. Happy Mother's Day, Mother. It's a happy Mother's Day. Because Jesus is making intercession for us every time we confess our sins. Happy Mother's Day. God has blessed us. He has blessed us again. And if you're listening to me, if you're here with me, if you're on the broadcast with me, and you never felt, never experienced, never been a part of God's love, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. Regardless of what you've done, Regardless of where you've been, regardless of how you've acted, God's love is available to you. Allow him here today. He'll change your heart. Let him come into you and give you a brand new start. Let him in today. He'll turn your life around. Let, let him in today. If you just let him in. If you never trusted Jesus as your Savior, 
you ought to cry, Jesus. Let him in today. He'll change your heart. Let him in today. He'll give you a brand new start. He'll turn your life. Let him in today. All these things give me. Just let him in. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in today. He'll change. If you have not been a good mother, this is a good moment to try Jesus. If your mother has not been a good mother, this is a good moment to try Jesus. If you've had things just like you like them, you ought to try Jesus. The door is open. The door is open. Let him in today. He'll change your heart. Let him in today. Will you come? He'll give you a brand new heart. Let him in today. He'll turn your life around. Yes, all of you. Jesus as your Savior. This is a good moment to try Him. If you can believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a stone hill called Calvary. That mean men killed Him. If you can believe the story that they buried Him in a barber tomb. And early that third day morning, He rose from the dead. This is your moment. You can try Jesus. And if you want him to save your soul today, just bow with me and repeat after me and invite him into your life. Whether you're in the room or on the broadcast, just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We believe if you prayed this prayer sincerely, believe the story that Jesus died and rose again. We believe that you're born again. And when you die, you will go to heaven. There may be others of you who are present who wrestle with sin like I do. Every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. This is your moment. I want to pray with you. Lord Jesus, we pray for those who wrestle. Those of us who need repentance. We pray, Father God, that you allow us to recommit, reconnect, rededicate our lives to you. Lord, we ask you to forgive us. Don't hold it against us. Bless us to walk with you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who, who don't have a church home, who's in between church homes or don't have a church home. This is your moment. Would you like to come and join the New Beginning Church? Whether you far or near, we believe that you can be a valuable member to the New Beginning Church. You can join, if you want to join my broadcast, you can join by inboxing me and let me know you want to be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston. If you're present with us, you can walk right down the aisle and join the New Beginning Church. The door of the church is open. If it's right to be in church, it's got to be wrong to be out of church. Foxes have holes. Birds of, of the air have nests. Those are their homes. You need to have a church home. Let him in today. Let him in today. Be a turn.
white and blue envelope for tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. The white and red envelope is for pastor's love offering. So ask for whichever envelope uh, you would like. Whichever envelope you would like or open them. For those of you who are listening by broadcast, you can give to the New Beginning Church in two formats. You can give by way of sale. Our sale account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting dot jesus at yahoo.com sale listing dot jesus at yahoo.com listing dot jesus at yahoo.com that's our sell account or you can mail your offering uh, to by way of mail for u.s postal service uh, p.o box 503 missouri city texas p.o box 503 missouri city texas 77459, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. We will ask this side to stand. We'll ask this side, my right. Ask this side to stand, your left. And, and follow the young lady with the yellow on from the rear to the front. And bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him. I will bless, I will bless. Oh my soul. That is good. Who has this time to stand? From the beautiful young lady from the rear to the front. For the Lord's time offered in sacrificial gifts. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 